on the 24th day of October, Halloween gave to me 24 Vincent's Farming, 23 Cushing's Ghouling, 22 Ruggers Glaring, 21 Babies Killing, 20 Horse Head Snorting, 19 D's Renting, 18 Franks Perving, 17 Angels Stripping, 16 Demons Jazzercising, 15 Runes on Parchment, 14 Joseph's Whispering, 13 Seniors Bleeding, 12 Creepy Masks, 11 Dancing Demons, 10 Catholic Monsters, 9 Priests of Miracling, 8 Jerry's Vamping, 7 Jody's Oinking, 6 Body Swapping, 5 Reeds of Wolfing, 4 Drunken Uncles, 3 Werewolf Colonies, 2 Spooky Sisters, and a Psycho Who Killed Janet Lee. Hey everyone, welcome to the 24th day of our 31 days of Halloween. We have exactly one week left to the big day, uh, that of course being Halloween, but uh, we are starting the celebration early with a little uh, I, little known maybe, or a movie that I don't hear talked about nearly enough, for my money, uh, a film from 1980 called Motel Hell. Uh, now, this is a movie that answers the question... What if everything about a movie was awesome? Um, this was directed by a guy named Kevin Connor, who directed a lot of television stuff. Motel Hell is honestly maybe the biggest thing he ever did at first glance. He did a lot of heart to heart. That's something, I guess. And uh, it was written by Robert and Stephen Charles Jaffe, who were known for a uh, demon seed and a movie called Night Flyers. That, that's real strange. Um, so... <laughs> what is Motel Hell? If you have never seen it, Motel Hell is the story of Farmer Vincent and his younger sister, Ida. Uh, they run the Motel Hello. The title comes from the fact that the O in Motel Hello is frequently out, so it looks like Motel Hell. Um, they also have a, a younger brother named Bruce, who is the local sheriff in town. And Farmer Vincent, aside from running a motel, is also known for smoking meats. Uh, he is a uh, very successful uh, meat smoker and, uh, you know, sells some to the guests that are passing through, sells some to the locals. Uh, as he says himself, they don't sell anything more uh, than a hundred mile radius so they can keep the quality up and the cost down. Uh, he uses no artificial preservatives. And uh, the thing that makes uh, Farmer Vincent's meat the best is that uh, he uses people uh, along with the, <laughs> the pork sausage. So he he basically sets up a bunch of traps uh, to waylay people driving by the motel. Every now and again, he'll use a guest uh, from the motel if he sees fit. And then he plants them in a garden, as he puts it, where they are buried up to their neck in dirt their throats are cut not to kill them, but to cut out their larynx. So they're constantly making these awful gargling sounds. And then he puts a bag on their head. And then, you know, feeds and waters them as needed. Uh, Ida, of course, is a big help in all of this. Uh, she is assisting with the, the family business, although Bruce doesn't know anything about it. And the events of the movie sort of surround the fact that uh, one night when Farmer Vincent is collecting some more meat for uh, his, his sausage, his famous smoked meats, he essentially shoots the tire out of a motorcycle and the guy gets bonked in the head by a tree. But Farmer Vincent kind of takes a shine to the girl that was the passenger and lets her stay in the motel. And basically because she has nowhere to go and it's the late 70s slash early 80s and you could just create a new life somewhere, she decides she's going to stay with Farmer Vincent. Well, Brother Bruce has designs on this young lady, but uh, she seems to be more enamored of Farmer Vincent himself, who is, uh, you know, doing uh, doing his thing, running the motel, goes out hunting in the mornings, although... You know, what he's going hunting for is probably a little problematic. And Terry, the, the girl, um, starts to get a bit of a crush on him. And so ultimately uh, decides that they're going to get married. 
so that they can have sex, which is sort of what she wants. And Farmer Vincent isn't into premarital sex, so uh, decides that they ought to get married to make that happen uh, so that it's good in the eyes of God. And so that's the broad strokes of the story of Motel Hell is, you know, Farmer Vincent and his family uh, running a simple, clean American business. And there is nothing about this movie that I, I don't like. Um, Farmer Vincent is played by a guy named Rory Calhoun, who prior to being in Motel Hell was a giant star, uh, had been in all kinds of movies, was sort of a heartthrob kind of star. Uh, started in movies in the 40s and uh, w was in, you know, just all kinds of like How to Marry a Millionaire and River of No Return, which uh, if memory serves was the Marilyn Monroe film and uh, Domino Kid and, you know, Apache Territory, you know, that kind of stuff. And he, w he was largely known um, as kind of a Western hero uh, for the most part. But towards the end of his career, he, you know, ended up in some B-movies, uh, like Motel Hell. Motel Hill is certainly a B-movie. Um, and he brings a real energy to the role. Like, when he, he filmed this movie, you know, he had to be, I think, almost 70 years old. But he's just a spitfire and is super fun in the film. And in addition to Roy Calhoun, uh, you have playing his, uh, his sister, Ida... Uh, a woman named Nancy Parsons, who is an absolute riot in this movie. I love her uh, to death. She was a uh, ball bricker in Porky's, if you remember that movie. Um, and has been in all kinds of stuff. Uh, uh, sadly, has passed away at this point at the too young age of 58. But she was uh, terrific. She's wonderful in this. And um, anyway, so she's helping out. She's kind of the... In a way, she's sort of the brains of the outfit, or cer she's certainly um, a little more scheming than is Farmer Vincent. Farmer Vincent is doing all this because he thinks, according to him, that, you know, the, he's solving two problems at once. One, the planet is overpopulated, and two, there's not enough food. So by turning people into food, you're sort of killing two birds with one stone. Or, you know, bikers and the occasional uh, weirdos that come to stay at your hotel. What makes Motel Hell so special, though? In addition to a great performance from Roy Calhoun and Nancy Parsons as Ida, they're fantastic in this movie, but it's got a real sense of humor about it. And I suppose, you know, in modern context, there are things that are sort of problematic uh, if you're looking at it through the most politically correct of lenses. Uh, for example, there is a couple that's into swinging that shows up in a terrific scene where they think that Ida and Farmer Vincent are also into swinging and are there uh, to, you know, get down with who they presume is a couple. But, like, the guy is uh, gets off on cross-dressing and the woman is a dominatrix, or at least she enjoys uh, rolling a whip around. And, you know, I guess you could, if you strained, you could make the argument that this is a real insensitive portrayal of cross-dressing or something. But at the end of the day, all of this movie is in good fun. Um, it's not out to offend anybody. Uh, it is just there to entertain. And so I'm going to, and also it was made in 1980. So, you know, I don't get too worked up about it. Um, but it seems like that though, where they're, <laughs> they're tying up this guy and he's like, oh, into bondage. And they're like, uh-huh, this is going to be fun, right? And that scene is really funny and, and kind of wonderful. There's a group uh, of band members that get waylaid by Farmer Vincent and Ida named Ivan and the Terribles. And Cliff Clavin himself, John Ratzenberger from uh, Cheers, is the drummer in the band, uh, which is just kind of a fun little cameo. But it's also hilarious because... They're just a bunch of stoners in a van that are basically hypnotized into feeling groovy before their final uh, resting place, uh, before their, their their final fate where they become sausage. And it's really, really funny when Farmer Vincent is hypnotizing them into having a groovy trip. And, and from his point of view, he's like, I just don't want them to suffer. 
So I'm going to use this, you know, crackpot contraption to make sure that they don't. Um, there are great little lines. In fact, I, it's uh, on one of the posters where Ida says, boy, these are some weirdos, huh? And he says, yeah, but you know what they say? It takes all kinds of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. And it's that kind of stuff, people. It is that kind of energy that Motel Hell has. Uh, it's just wonderful. There's so many fun little moments in it from, um, you know, like Terry uh, going on a date with Bruce to go see a drive-in. But his method of going to a drive-in is to basically surreptitiously get the audio feed and then watch the screen with binoculars. And he's just a real low life. Um, you know, all the, the manners of how they're tending this garden of human heads that they've got is just the best. And honestly, the idea that they have buried these people up to their necks and then cut their larynxes, larynxes, something so that they can't scream and they're just constantly making this sound like <laughs> it's kind of terrifying, but also it's really funny. And that's the thing that this movie gets right in a way that kind of few horror comedies do where it's absurd. And it's clearly at times a parody of things like Psycho and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because there's a chainsaw fight at the end. Did I mention that this movie is awesome? Yes, there's a chainsaw fight at the, at the end of this movie. Um, but in addition to it being a parody of that stuff, it's also just kind of good natured. There's something almost down home, warm and friendly about Farmer Vincent, even as he's, you know, basically serving up human beings to other people, you know, like people love in, in fairness, everyone seems to love this movie. So he's doing something right. But Motel Hell is a, a rare example of, of that horror comedy done right where it's it doesn't lean too hard into the comedy and it's still a horror movie it still functions as, as a horror film but when it is a comedy it's really good like there's and it's a lot of throwaway gags like there there's a scene where uh they they finally discover in a psycho like swamp all these cars that farmer vincent has been dumping for years and years and as the flashlight is panning across this just sea of cars in this swamp, the car or the van rather used by Ivan and the Terribles uh, is, is is revealed under the flashlight. And as soon as you see it, a bong floats to the surface and it's stuff like that. It's just a, a really like clever, very tongue in cheek movie, but also it's fun and kind of creepy and wonderful and, Motel Hell is the kind of movie that I wish they made more of these days that wasn't so ridiculous in in um, the way that like the scary movie series was and that sort of thing where it's just constantly about the jokes. Um, I think maybe Cabin in the Woods comes close in terms of we're taking the subject matter seriously enough, but the subject matter itself is so absurd and the characters are, are sort of working their way through how absurd this situation is that some comedy comes out of that. And that's how Motel Hell is. It, it doesn't serve up a lot of broad jokes. It's more like, hey, there's going to be these little funny things around the edges of this movie um, that you can kind of stop and enjoy and it makes the rest of the film uh, so much better. And then there's some stuff that is very broad and very silly, like there are two girls that show up uh, and and get waylaid by Farmer Vincent by a bunch of uh, cows. Not cows, not even cows. They're just cardboard cutouts of cows that he has put in in the road, so that uh, they will stop the car and he can throw his gas on them. And that kind of stuff is really silly and fun. Um, yeah, it, it, there, it, there's a great moment where Rory Calhoun is even waxing kind of romantic about the fact that, you know, one thing I really like is these traps that I said, you know, where we're putting bear traps in the middle of the road to blow out tires and this gimmick with the cows and whatnot. I really like it. I really like the fact that I'm able to sort of express my creativity a little bit as I'm 
you know, abducting and murdering people. It's just the best. I love this so much. Uh, if you've never seen Motel Hell, I promise you I haven't spoiled anything that will make the movie less enjoyable. Motel Hell gets better every single time I've seen it, and I've seen it a bunch. And uh, it's every time I watch it, I wonder why I don't watch it every day. You know, it's, it's such a wonderful... Uh, did I use the word wonderful? It's such a wonderful mo- movie about really eccentric, weird characters. The only character that does anything in this movie that I find head scratching is Terry herself, who just abandons whatever life she was on the way to, to live at this motel and potentially marry Farmer Benson. But everybody else is just kind of getting by. And Farmer Benson has a very clear ethical code. And he tries it, the people that he's abducted. He tries to treat them well up to the point that he murders them. And he tries to do that in the most humane possible way. You know, he's not a a evil guy, but everything he does is just totally monstrous. And that's what makes the character uh, so terrific. And, you know, Ida is really the one that's more of a psychopath, really. But you'll see what I mean. You ought to check it out. It's available on Amazon Prime for free if you're a subscriber to that service then you have no reason not to watch Motel Hell. And even if you're not subscribed to that, uh, you should find a way to watch Motel Hell. I think it's available for rent and so forth uh, on various streaming platforms. And it's a terrific movie. And one of the, strangely, one of the longer ones we've talked about recently in that it's like an hour 40, you know, which is not a long run time, but seems long when you compare it to, uh, you know, uh, some of the, the movies that we've been discussing recently that chime in at a a smooth 90 minutes like even tales from the crypt with five stories was only 90 minutes and the hitcher was was that way revenge uh was under 90 minutes so yeah even though that this movie is a little longer it's just so creative and full of fun and weird uh situations and and goofy scenarios and characters that uh it it just zooms right along it's just a, a terrific terrific movie um, so that is, uh, our 24th film and boy, howdy, it, it's only going to get better from here. Well, probably not because Motel Hell is amazing and you should see it, but we're going to do nothing but talk about great movies from here on out. So buckle up. We've got one week to go. I really, really appreciate you, uh, taking the time out to listen to these reviews and hear me, you know, especially a movie like this where I'm just sort of waxing nostalgic about a film that I dearly love. There, there's a line at the end of this movie that I got wrong for decades before I finally realized, like, oh, no, I'm misremembering the last scene of this movie to some degree. But it don't matter. This is a movie that has been with me since childhood, and I still love it just as much. And I don't think it's just because I'm nostalgic for it. I think it's a really good movie. Um, you know, Roger Ebert uh, gave it a good review. That's how good Motel Hell is. Turned old Roger Ebert around on it. Anyway... Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the weekend before Halloween. It is time to get those jack-o'-lanterns if you haven't already. So uh, it's about carving time. And uh, do good work today if you got to do any work. If not, relax, enjoy some movies. Maybe Motel Hell. You might enjoy that. And uh, stay spooky. We got one week left to be legitimately spooky in public before people call the authorities, everyone. So between now and then, let's make it count. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for a whole different movie. One that I haven't seen, uh, but it's a classic. And I can't wait to watch it. And I can't wait to talk to you about it. So we will see you then. <laughs>